So we've been uh, taking our youth group. We, I go to church at Calvary Chapel in Yorba Linda. Um, it's Calvary Chapel Saving Grace in Yorba Linda. And um, we've been taking the youth group through uh, apologetics because we asked them, what do you guys want to learn? We usually ask them they want to go through a book. And they just started asking questions that we were talking about tonight. Yeah. And so our thing is we want to train the youth, of course, like this, is to, to have the right answers in their high schools and because we, we're tra training high schoolers and junior hires. Um, how important do you guys think, even though we look at these passages like Acts 17, where Paul's talking, um, basically all apologetics in, in uh, Athens, but how important do you think it is to have your own personal relationship with God before you start studying, and how, how important is it to understand the Bible, and not, I mean, we're never going to fully understand, but study it and learn it before you start doing this apologetics and, and, and philosophy and all this kind of stuff? Well, know. quick distinction, there's a difference between belief that and belief in. Belief that is getting evidence that God exists, that Jesus rose from the dead, that the Bible is true. That's what apologetics is. It's giving answers so you can believe that it's true. But you can have all the belief that in the world and not have your moral transgressions forgiven because you have to go from belief that to belief in. Uh, James says even the demons believe that God exists, but they tremble, right? They know intellectually that God exists better than we do, right. but they don't trust in him. And one problem with apologetics for some is that they get so involved in belief that they forget mm -hmm. about belief in. They're just trying to win arguments rather than trying to win the person. So we have to go from belief that to belief in. Now, Jim just wrote a great new book, for Jim, anyway. Um, <laughs> it's called Forensic Faith that I highly recommend. Tell them a little bit about that, what's in there. Well, I'll forget about the book for a second. I think what you're saying is, is, is important for young people, right? Because you're, you're dealing with junior hires and high schoolers. And so what we see are statistically the problems we see. And we've measured this for a lot of years. And we were, it used to be we would start these polls with college students. You're 21, you're 22. Are you a Christian? No. Were you raised Christian? Yes. I'll say, well, that's what's going on with that. And we assumed for a lot of years that what colleges were doing were stripping people of their faith. But what we started doing more recently is asking when did you actually, because, you know, parents would always say to me, what do I do to prepare my students so they can survive the battle they're about to face in college? Well, the numbers don't really support that anymore. Because when you talk to what, these people who are 22 or 23 and they're no longer Christians, and they'll say, yeah, I was raised as a Christian, but I'm no longer a Christian. And then you ask them the question, well, when did you stop believing? I think we always assumed it was in college. It's 10 to 17, over and over and over again. 10 to 17. That window, that 85% window, mm -hmm. used to be if you didn't become a Christian by the age of 18, there's only a 15% chance you'd ever become a Christian. 85% of Christians were Christians by the age of 18. That is down to 12. Yeah. Why? Because there's skepticism now in that range of 12 to 18 that never used to be there. And why is it there? Because you are no longer the only authority in your kids' That's lives. That's right. They are able to Google. They're able to search on the web. That, so you're doing a holy work, working with junior hires and high schoolers. Mm -hmm. So the bad news for us as parents is it's a lot earlier. It's happening on our watch in our homes. The good news is it's happening in our homes. We can have an impact on this. This is not your kids going away to college where I can't even interact with them. This is no. We need to start interacting with our junior hires. Amen. Right, with our 10-year-olds before junior high, with our upper elementary. So I think that this is important. Now, I, I'm always hesitant with, the, with the, the, the language of, do we need to have a relationship with Jesus? What does that even mean? What do you mean by that? Good question to ask even about that. What do you mean by that? I am not as impressed with relationship language mm -hmm. only because I have so many Mormon family members, uh, six brothers and sisters, half brothers and sisters, all raised LDS. And I, I need to know, is this true first? Because I see a lot of behavior on the part of my Mormon family, which is inspiring, but it's That's not right. a true system. That's right. And they, they can even argue they've got relationship, they've got this, they've got that, they've got belief in, all of that stuff. But it's not in something that's true. Mm -hmm. So I'm always more interested in whether it's true mm -hmm. first before I go to the next step. So I think in the end, yes, I want both. It's not an either or, but truth has to come first. Mm -hmm.